You must have all heard of the term unicorn. But what's unicorn in business? So basically, a unicorn in business is a startup which has got a valuation over $1 billion. And if you are in the UK, you'll recognize some of these names as well. The best knowns will be Just Eat, Deliveroo because they're all food delivery apps. And there are some banking apps as well like Revolut, Monzo, Starling Bank. And if you are from India and a Mallu like me from Kerala, you definitely would have come across this most talked about unicorn. That's Baiju's. So Baiju's is the most talked about startup because of the massive, massive valuation they had reached one time. But now it's in the news for the fall or the failure. So today, let's talk about what are the lessons we as entrepreneurs or startups can learn from the growth phase of this business as well as the failure. So now let's go back a few years and see how his journey was, where it all began. Let's look into his timeline actually. So Baiju's was started by Baiju Ravindran. As I said earlier, he's a guy from Kerala who's a mechanical engineer and he was working in a company. So while he was working in the company and he was not interested in getting into the well-known institutes like IIT or IIM in India, but he passed the CAT exam not just once but twice with 100% results, you know. For those who are from outside India and don't know what's a CAT exam, it's a commons admission test which is a computerized based um, examination which is mostly conducted for the graduate uh, management programs for the well-known institutes in India like IIT which is Indian Institute of Technology and IIM which is Indian Institute of Management. So after getting such a great score which is 100% in uh, these CAT exams he started helping his friends to uh, you know to go into these exams and uh, gain success in these exams as well. So once they got into the admissions into these institutes these friends friends they gave him an idea or why not start coaching other people and why not start your own company so in 2005 he set up his own coaching classes under the name so the first company was called noesis where as you can imagine it was just a few students to begin with so he had like you know few students like 20 25 students in a classroom but because his teaching style was quite good it started getting popular and the number of students started increasing so he shifted from small classrooms into large stadiums because he had to you know fit in thousands or hundreds of students into the class and in 2008 what happened he thought let me you know start a pilot scheme by doing it online so that was when he set up his pilot scheme and in 2009 he met his now partner or wife and the co-founder of uh, his business Divya Gokulnath through one of his uh, coaching classes and then they got married. Two years down the line in 2011 to be specific in May 2011 he set up he rebranded the company into V Global that is V standing for winning edge where they tried a freemium kind of a model so what they did was they'll offer mock exams for uh, for the students and only if they were happy with the mock exams they did have to go for the paid classes. And by the end of that year, in December 2011, he pivoted from V Global into Think and Learn Private Limited, which is the parent company of Baiju's today. In 2015 was when he digitized his business and launched the self-learning app, which we all recognize now with the big B branding logo that we all see, you know, everywhere as their branding that is today. And then what happened? They started slowly moving from cat coaching classes into school learning where, you know, they'll be teaching the school kids like from year 3 to year 12 students. All the learning was done online. Nobody till date had done online tuitions. So it was quite successful, especially in a educational competitive country like India. This was getting quite successful and quite popular amongst the Indian parents. And over 2 million students downloaded the app in the first three months. This, as you can imagine, such popularity was building up and it started attracting the attention of the investors and investors started pouring money, millions of millions of dollars into the company. And in 2016, they raised a Series C funding of $75 million. And by the end of that year, same year in 2016 itself, they raised a Series D funding of another $50 million. And by 2018, they reached $1 billion valuation and entering into the Unicorn Club. And comes 2020. 2020 
is an unforgettable year for many because we know covid happened and it was a it was a real bad year for many of the businesses but there were many companies who made money during that year and byju's was one of those companies because due to covid the schools or the, the schools were all closed and the teaching all went online which was an advantage for the company because their learning app was used more and more and people were bound to go for the online classes instead of going face to face classes which massively massively helped them in their growth in that year and then byju they wanted to expand so they went on an acquisition spree this year they started buying education companies similar education companies who were doing well so what he did was he went on to buy a coding platform company for the kids which is called white hat junior for 300 million dollars in 2020 and in 2021 they bought another education company called akash which was also doing well for 1 billion dollars and then they wanted to expand globally so they expanded to uk US where in US they bought another company as well which is called Osmo for 120 million dollars so as you can see here his aim was to expand quickly or expand globally by just buying out the companies that are doing quite well so by now as you can imagine Byju's was the most valued edtech startup in the world with a staggering valuation of 22 billion dollars and the founder Byju Ravindran he was one of the young youngest billionaires in india and he was also listed by forbes as one of the 100 richest people in 2020 but unfortunately on the flip side you know things started changing for them for byju's looks like the acquisition was which started backfiring especially white hat junior that was a wrong decision because white hat junior was not a, a profit making company it was a loss making company and white hat junior you know they had a lot of bad press and a bad reputation not just in india but internationally as well their sales people were um, known for manipulating and forcing the parents into buying their coding courses so this all started you know they started de- deviating from their noble mission why they set up the company in the initial phase where you know their initial tagline was fall in love with learning and that was the reason why byju when he set up his company people loved because the way he was teaching he wanted people to love learning but now they started getting into a sales or a marketing machine where they were just selling tablets and other hardware equipments you know so it was just becoming like a sales company rather than a educational company with a noble mission so the company was just not doing aggressive sales but they were doing uh, you know aggressive marketing as well they started spending a lot of money on market marketing they started uh, you know focusing on activities like sponsoring the indian cricket team sponsoring the fifa world cup bringing brand ambassadors like you know shahrukh khan which is the most biggest actor in india and also bringing lionel messi as their brand ambassador so you can imagine how many millions of dollars they would have spent so basically as you as you can imagine they were really struggling to sustain because they were spending a lot more than its revenue byju's did not stop there to sustain they went out and started getting more and more money so they went out to get more loans in november 2021 they went out to take a loan of 1.2 billion dollars from international lenders where the terms was they had to pay the large chunk of the money only by the end of their term so they didn't have to pay monthly you know big monthly installments so and then comes 2022 when as we all know pandemic started slowing down and then things started getting back to normality so the schools reopened the kids started going back to school and the demand for online learning fell so this is when as an online learning app byju's was started to getting affected because students people did not need the online learning people started withdrawing from the courses the parents were saying that they were not happy with the courses they wanted the money back they were requesting for refunds so things started showing you know cracks started falling in there and then also as we you know said earlier there were all these kind of legal issues and scandals and the bad reputation in the market so all these started piling up this year while this was all happening outside the company or in the market 
things within the company was not looking good as well because things were not going as as planned with the sales targets and the, with the revenue and everything but they had to show outside or they had to show to their investors and the board members that things were going fine it was all going okay their revenues were quite inflated in the books and there seemed to be a revenue mismatch what was shown in the numbers as well and what happened was the investors they felt that they were being misled about the actual performance of the company and then the auditors which was Deloitte which is a very very well known company one of the top companies they also felt that you know they were really misleading everyone and the numbers they were showing on the books was not right there was a proper proper mismatch and they were inflating the numbers way too high and the financial results of 2021 it was not submitted on time it was submitted 18 months late showing a loss of 540 million dollars of which more than 25 percent was because of white hat junior and now the U.S. lenders who lended them, you know, uh, $1.2 billion recently, they came to know about this uh, financial mismatch here. And they also came to know about the delay of 18 months in submitting their financial results. So that brought about a concern in them. And they requested an immediate payment of $200 million. This Baidu's was not able to do because they didn't have the fund in hand. And what happened is because they went out of the term loan, they sued the company, the bank. And in turn, what happened is a US lender sued Baidu as well. This then in turn led to because they sued one of the biggest lenders in the US, you know, this started bringing again rift and concerns within the existing investors. And now this lack of trust and transparency it brought about concerns everywhere and people started quitting so the board members started quitting as you must have heard in the news you know Deloitte has quit as their auditor and many of the top uh, executives from the board they have quit as well so all this led to the decline of valuation from the staggering 22 billion dollars to 5 billion dollars now so basically as you can see the company was just surviving it was not running on profit it was running on massive losses and it had to keep borrowing again and again on a continuous basis so what are the lessons that we can learn from this so let's look at two different kind of lessons as i said you know we've got the lessons that we can learn from the growth phase of the company and we've got the lessons that we can learn from the decline of this company as well so what are the lessons that we can learn from their mistakes so lesson number one is do not move away from your noble purpose or you know your initial values of the company because whenever we set up your company you know whether when, when when we are a small founder we genuinely have an interest or we have an ethical reason to set up this company and it all starts with a noble purpose it could be like uh, you know maybe bringing more greenery or it could be bringing more healthy uh, eating for me jack and chill that was that was what i set up the company for because i wanted people to eat more healthily with uh, less additives and less you know unknown ingredients in their food so more of the healthy eating so out of greed in the expansion or building your brand or expanding globally you should not deviate from your initial noble cause or your values your core values of your business and it should not get into that unethical phase where you're just turning into a sales company or you're just turning into a company who wants to you know increase your valuation now lesson number two is expect the best and plan for the worst so whenever you you know set up your whenever you run your business you'll have good times coming in but we need to plan for the worst case scenario as well so what critics say is that Baiju know how to scale a business but he didn't plan for a bust always you have to make sure you plan for the worst case scenario now lesson number three is don't try to bite off more than what he can chew. Here what happened was Baiju's, he just wanted to expand too quickly. He was, he was moving too fast. He was expanding, which is a good thing, but he was doing it too fast, too quickly in a very short period of time. You need to have a slow and steady pace to run your business to see how the market is changing and to adapt it and change what are the customer requirements that you need and you need to see and adapt your business to that now point number four or learning number four which i think is very very important is you should maintain trust and transparency in your business so running a business is not just yourself 
you are the founder but you need a lot of people around you so you will have your investors you will have your stakeholders you will have your customers you will have your marketing people you know so you will have a team around you to run your business in this case as well the stakeholders the board of directors and the auditors they all felt that he was not having a transparent communication he was misleading them and that is what broke the trust of the board members and the final one which we can learn from their learning so lesson number 5 is you should not go into aggressive marketing or sales practices which leads to unethical routes you know so as we said uh, starting with white hat junior and then later on they were acquired by uh, byjus so both the sales people they were getting into these unethical marketing practices where they were forcing the parents or manipulating the parents or building fear into these parents so you shouldn't go into that route to kind of sell your products you should have your ethics still on board now on a positive side what are the there are a couple of lessons that i feel we could learn from the growth phase of this business embrace innovation and adaptability because why was byju's learning app one of the well known apps in those days because the way he embraced adaptability the way he embraced the technological changes he had gamification in his app he had more of uh, you know the quizzes and it was more interactive kind of app so that is what set them apart so always what we need to do know is we need to adapt to the technological changes we need to adapt to the customer requirements and make it interesting for them and bring about innovation in your products and that was what initially in their good phase what has made them popular and the second good thing which you can learn is how to build your brand because um, as we saw the way they have marketed themselves and how they have built their brand the purple colored big b we all remember when we see byju's or we say about byju's they even marketed themselves globally as well including lionel messi recently so the way they build their brand is quite uh, something that we can learn from them so as a startup it's always important that you build your brand or you know you invest in your brand building to come to bring about a compelling promise so that you can have a loyal customer following and the third lesson is scalability and expansion this is something which we can learn from them as well again as i said not on to the extreme side but on to the good side so as a startup always our next stage you know or every company you see including the twitter what happened recently was as well so every company you see that as part of their expansion they acquire other brands all small companies will be acquired by the bigger brands and that is a massive trend that goes around so what you need to a plan itself as part of your expansion is to see what are the other complementing brands or complementing companies who are doing well which you could acquire so that you can increase your valuation but again you have to see if it is sustainable or not so the success and the failure of byju's i felt it's a really good case study for us to learn and understand not just for indian startups but any startups around the world to understand that even a massively valued company can have a downfall and there are things that we need to watch with caution we need to see if the company is running sustainable or not and take every step slowly so that we can understand the market see what is required and then proceed one step at a time so i hope these lessons would help you in sustaining of your business because i know most of my followers are small companies are startups and in their idea phase so uh, wishing you all the very best and do let me know if you have any more comments about uh, the company byju's and if you feel that if you want to add any more of these do let me know in the comments below okay you take care and see you in my next video bye bye